Thank you all so much for joining me today as we explore the new features of the NumWorks Graphing Calculator. My name is Matt Blevins, and I'm a math teacher in residence at NumWorks. I'm very excited to dig into the new and updated features coming out with software version 23. We are going to explore some new features from version 23 that make the NumWorks Graphing Calculator even better for students and teachers. Some of our major features are prime function notation, viewing plots of derivatives of functions, graphing on a polar grid, evaluating derivatives of polar and parametric functions, defining a search interval for advanced equations, and using data sets in statistical inference from the Inference app. We are going to go through each application individually to see how they have been improved. At the end, I will provide a URL where you can explore all of the additional features in more detail. The first update is probably one of our most requested updates from our stats community. We've added the ability to use a data set for significance tests and confidence intervals about the mean in the inference application. Before we enter the inference application, let's take a moment to notice that I've already added a data set to the statistics application and regression application. These data sets are now synced with the inference app. For example, let's navigate over to the inference application and select tests. We'll perform a one sample t-test for a mean on the data stored in V1N1 from the statistics application. Let's assume our null hypothesis is 30 and the alternative hypothesis is mu is greater than 30. When I click on next, notice the new screen here. You can now choose whether to input the summary statistics or to use a data set. Clicking on input the statistics will reveal a familiar screen where you can input the statistics for your data set, just like you could before version 23. Let's back out and select the new feature which is use a data set. Here, columns of data from the statistics app are synced to the inference app. You can also press OK on the data set to switch to a different or empty set. Pressing OK on a column header will give you the option to sort, fill with a formula, or clear the table. Backing out of the column header, you can edit, delete, or add values within the columns themselves. Once you have your data ready, you can scroll to the bottom to select Next, and the required values have been calculated automatically using my data set, including the sample mean, sample standard deviation, sample size, test statistic, p-value, and degrees of freedom. Scrolling down to next here will reveal the visual representation our statistics users have always loved. This use a data set feature has been added to all one and two mean significance tests and confidence intervals. We've also updated the t-tests for slope and t-interval with the option to select any data set from regression, not just x1, y1. For the next features, let's move to the grapher application. To begin, let's press OK to enter a new element. We've made the empty template immediately available so you can begin typing. This makes inputting expressions in any format easy to do. Single variable expressions will default to y equals form. For example, typing 3x plus 4 and clicking execute will create the equation y equals 3x plus 4. We can click on OK to edit this equation and delete it out, and the template button will reappear when the input field is blank. We've kept all your favorite templates in the template menu and even made a few updates to some. You can access these by navigating to the right and pressing OK on the Templates button. Let's select the function template and edit it to make the function equal x cubed plus 4x squared minus 31x minus 70. We have added some new and exciting derivative toggles to the Options menu. These will allow you to turn on the value and, and plot of the first and second derivative of a function. Let's try this out with our function by pressing OK on the three dots to access the Options menu and selecting Derivatives. Since we used a cubic function, let's turn on the plot for the first and second derivatives. Notice that turning the plot on will automatically turn the value on as well so that it will also be included in the table in addition to the graph. We can now press the back button twice to go back to the list of functions. Notice that f prime of x and f double prime of x are both added to our list of functions that will be graphed, and they will automatically default to different colors. Let's take a look at our graph of the function with its first and second derivatives. Here we can see all three graphs at one time. 
Notice that the values of the derivatives are present on the bottom banner, along with the values for x and f of x. If I navigate left to go to the maximum value for f of x, I can easily see that the value of f prime is 0. You can also use your up or down arrows to move your tracer to the derivatives. For example, pressing down one time moves your tracer to indicate the zero of the first derivative. This is a really powerful tool for calculus students to make connections between extreme values and zeros for critical values. Next, let's go to the table. We can navigate to the right to see values for f prime of x or f double prime of x. Next, let's head back to the expressions tab. The next new features we will explore will be really useful for exploring polar and parametric functions. Before doing this, let's hide the functions we have already created so they will not be graphed. Go back to the Options menu and deselect Show in Graph and Table, then press the Back button. Notice that not only is our primary function now hidden, but its derivatives are hidden automatically as well. Navigate down to add an element and press OK. In the templates menu, let's go down to the polar equation. We've now made it so that polar expressions use function notation so they are stored in the variable key. This will make doing other computations like area easier to do. Let's input a polar by editing r1 of theta equals cosine of theta to see some fun new additions for polar. Let's create the cardioid r1 of theta equals 3 plus 3 cosine of theta and look at its graph. Arrow up to axes to see some new options about the graph. With version 23, you can now choose to plot your graph on a Cartesian or polar coordinate system by changing the grid type. Let's select a polar grid system. We've also added a few new derivative features for polar and parametric functions. Let's press the toolbox key to access the calculate menu and start within the options menu. You will see you have the option to display the value of the first and or second derivative. With these activated, you will add the derivative values in the bottom banner as you dynamically trace the graph. These derivative values are also displayed in the table. Let's go back to the graph of your function and look at even more new derivative features in the Calculate menu. You can quickly access this using your toolbox. We've added a Find menu to Polar. We have added two new features to the Find menu. You can now view the value of dy dx of your function or add a dynamic tangent line to your graph. Just like with our function's tangent line, you can input a value for theta to calculate a specific tangent line. For example, inputting pi over 2 will create the tangent line. All of these great derivative features work the exact same way for parametric functions as well. You can toggle on the first and second derivative values in the options menu and calculate dy dx and a tangent line in the find menu. We will not walk through all of these for parametric, but I do want to highlight inputting parametric functions. Let's navigate back to the expression tab, add a new element, and use a template. Navigate down to the template menu. We've updated our parametric function inputs to use point notation for a more consistent experience. I don't want a parametric function inputted for later demonstration, so let's create the parametric function with an x component of 5 cosine of 2t and a y component of 3 sine of 6t. Therefore, we should have g of t equals 5 cosine of 2t and 3 sine of 6t. Next, let's head to the calculation application. The next update I'll share is the addition of some exciting things in the var menu for BC Calculus. Press the var key and navigate into functions. Here you can see that the polar function is now available for calculation. Additionally, the x and y components of g of t are here as well. This is great for formulas like arc length and speed. The next new feature is the support of the prime notation for evaluating the derivative. Let's find the derivative of f of x for x equals 2. Press OK on f of x. We can add the prime symbol by using alpha and the toolbox key. Enter a 2 in the parentheses to get the value of the first derivative of f when x equals 2. If we want the value for higher order derivatives, simply include an additional prime mark. You can also enter higher order derivatives using exponent notation. We can evaluate the third derivative of f at 2 
by simply entering F, pressing the X to the Y button, then 3, followed by 2 in parentheses. These features offer students the ability to mirror the notation on their paper. The DDX notation is still available in the toolbox under Calculus if they are using this notation instead. For the last update we will review, let's head to the Equations application. We already have a trigonometric equation entered in for this example. When we solve advanced equations like the one entered here, we now automatically create a search interval without the user needing to select it every time. You can edit the search interval for solutions if the auto interval is not preferred. For example, if your application problem only applies over a specific interval, navigate up to Search Interval to choose the limits, say 0 to 4 pi. If you would like to learn even more about the version 23 update, you can read more about all the updates in version 23 along with a complete version history on our website numworks.com slash calculator slash update. At Numworks, many of our best new features start from teacher feedback. We would love to hear what you think about version 23. Simply type the URL into your browser or scan the QR code to launch the feedback survey. You must be logged in to your Numworks account to access the survey. Thank you for learning more about what is new in version 23. If you have any questions, you can always contact us at contact at numworks.com.